Well, thank you very much for this opportunity to share some of our ongoing work that is looking at the mechanisms of cardiotoxicity. And I hope by the end of uh, my presentation that I will have convinced you that the endothelium plays a really important role. Over the, the last few decades, we've seen a, a real dramatic decrease in mortality of breast cancer. And this is partly due to um, better and early screening, uh, but also the development of very effective drugs, um, including anthracyclines uh, and drugs that target HER2, including uh, Herceptin. At the same time, though, um, one, of, one of the challenges is that uh, patients with breast cancer uh, have an elevated risk of developing uh, cardiovascular disease. Uh, as you can see here, compared to uh, age match controls, there's an elevated risk of, of a se severe cardiac events in patients with breast cancer. And this may be due to a number of factors, but one of the factors is clearly uh, the effect that cancer therapy itself has on the cardiovascular system. So here is a, a slide uh, re, re, uh, revealing a number of uh, drugs that are used currently for cancer therapy. Uh, and a number of these have known toxicity to either cardiomyocytes uh, or to the endothelial cells that line blood vessels. For the purpose of today's talk, I wanna focus on uh, HER2 targeted therapies, including trastuzumab and anthracyclines as these are mainstay treatments in breast cancer. In patients that are treated with, uh, with chemotherapeutics, uh, in a subset of those patients, there is cardiac dysfunction. And while this might initially be asymptomatic and, and rather subtle, uh, over time, it, it can become more severe uh, until uh, it can be clinically defined as cancer therapy-related cardiac dysfunction. Uh, and CTRCD affects uh, more than 10% of cancer survivors, and in some studies, up to 40% of survivors, and it becomes a, a major cause of non-malignant mortality. And it's characterized clinically by a left ventricular ejection fraction uh, decline by more than 10% without heart failure symptoms, or a decline of more than 5% with heart failure symptoms. Uh, and as can be shown on this, uh, this schematic on the left here, early treatment of heart failure uh, in response to cancer therapy uh, can, can be quite effective. Um, but as uh, the cardiac damage becomes more severe, it's, it's more difficult to get a full response. And in some cases, cancer therapies uh, really are not able to restore normal function. So it becomes really important to detect uh, cardiac uh, defects early. But this is quite difficult to do without uh, using advanced uh, imp cardiac imaging, which is expensive and, and difficult to do in all patients. So we really need to find early biomarkers and better understand mechanisms uh, if we want to make progress in this area. In order to, to try and identify some early biomarkers of CTRCD, uh, we are, are partnering with Dinesh Thavandir Nathan, uh, who has a, a large cohort of patients as part of the EMBRACE cohort, uh, where uh, they've enrolled uh, 140 patients with stage one to three HER2 positive breast cancer. Uh, and those patients are treated with anthracyclines followed by uh, trastuzumab, also known as, as Herceptin. And these patients have no history of, of cardiovascular disease and a baseline left ventricular ejection fraction of greater than 55%. So in this, uh, in this cohort, um, uh, Dinesh has uh, performed um, cardiac imaging at regular intervals, including echocardiography and cardiac magnetic resonant imaging, and also collected blood samples uh, during the treatment course. Um, and what we wanna focus on really are these first three time points is we wanna identify very early biomarkers. And importantly, this is uh, before any uh, treatment of cancer has begun. Uh, this time point is directly after anthracycline chemotherapy and before uh, HER2 targeted therapy. And then the third time point is right after uh, HER2 targeted therapy. Uh, as you can see, cardiac MRI is quite uh, good at detecting uh, subtle changes in left ventricular ejection fraction at even early time points in those patients that will go on to develop CTRCD. What we'd really like to be able to do is at this time point, even before cancer treatment, to be able to distinguish these patients that are predisposed to develop 
uh, CT or CD, and we really have no way of doing that currently. If we just look at uh, clinical data, uh, clinical data on its own is not able to uh, predict those patients that will go on to develop CT or CD. If we look at standard uh, traditional markers of cardiac damage, including high sensitivity troponin and uh, BMPs, we find that there's, there's no difference between those patients that develop CTRCD versus those that do not. And while most uh, of the focus over the last uh, decades has been focused on the effect on cardiomyocytes, there's a real growing interest in the effect of cancer therapy on the endothelium. And importantly, the endothelium and cardiomyocytes uh, crosstalk uh, to, to regulate the function of the heart. Shown here in this uh, schematic is uh, how chemotherapeutic drugs can affect the endothelium and how this can in turn affect the cardiomyocytes. So uh, drugs such as doxorubicin can decrease the production of nitric oxide and neuregulin, which are both uh, send protective signals to cardiomyocytes. These drugs can also induce reactive oxygen species uh, induce endothelial cell apoptosis and disrupt uh, endothelial cell junctions. And this, this decrease in endothelial cell barrier uh, can then affect negatively affect the parenchyma, uh, including the cardiomyocytes underneath. Importantly, HER2 targeted therapies can also uh, block the effect of, of neuregulin on the cardiomyocytes uh, and can, can have a damaging effect on the heart. So one of, one of the mediators of endothelial cell dysfunction is inflammation. And so we, we started out by measuring a number of cytokines in these patients uh, over time. Uh, and three of them are shown here. And, and each of these has been, uh, in, has been associated with endothelial cell dysfunction. Uh, myeloperoxidase is, is made by neutrophils. And we also see the IP10 and interferon alpha alpha. These are all elevated, and, and importantly, this is in patients even before cancer therapy has started. These um, uh, cytokines are actually elevated in those patients that will go on to develop CTRCD. This is our first indication that there are molecular differences between patients that will go on to develop uh, cardiac dysfunction versus those that do not. And when we looked at endothelial markers, we, we found quite uh, profound changes in endothelial markers in those patients that develop CTRCD. Uh, angiopoietin-2 and endoglin were elevated. And again, this is elevated even before cancer therapy has started. Uh, and these factors remain uh, elevated at, at um, distinct time points during treatment. Uh, E-selectin and endothelin-1 also are elevated in those patients that go on to develop CTRCD. So this uh, reveals to us that endothelial dysfunction is a, is a key characteristic of those patients that develop CTRCD. So we wanted to, to better understand the effect of anthracyclines on the endothelium. And so we exposed primary endothelial cells to these drugs and then looked at uh, using exceligence assay. We looked uh, at the imp impedance of the, the monolayer. Um, we looked at uh, inflammatory responses in the endothelium. And we also looked at, at adherence junctions by staining for VE cadherin and looked for uh, cell death by staining for tunnel. Uh, we found that in, in cells exposed to uh, either peak or trough doses, and these are doses that uh, are derived from, uh, from patients uh, that are exposed to these drugs, we find that doxorubicin and uh, epirubicin uh, activate ICAM-1 and VCAM-1, which are important adhesion molecules uh, of activated endothelial cells. We also find if we looked at the integrity of the monolayer, that increasing doses of these drugs uh, would decrease the integrity of the monolayer. And this is all relative to untreated cells. This was further confirmed by looking at uh, adherence junctions by staining for VE cadherin. Uh, we can see in control cells, there's nice uh, junctions in between the endothelial cells. TNF alpha is used as a positive control. You can see disruption of these junctions and increasing doses of these chemotherapeutic drugs. You can see a uh, decrease uh, the level of the, these adhe adherence junctions between the cells. And that's quantified here. And we also see an increase in apoptosis of the endothelial cells in response to these drugs.
So endothelial cells are, are really very sensitive to uh, these drugs. In addition to uh, things such as nitric oxide and neuregulin, the endothelium also produces extracellular vesicles. And these are really important in cell-cell communication. Uh, extracellular vesicles include uh, exosomes that are produced by multivesicular bodies uh, and uh, microparticles that are uh, produced by membrane budding. These ones are slightly larger vesicles. Um, these vesicles can be secreted from the endothelium into the blood uh, where they can be uh, uh, isolated and, and, uh, and assessed. Um, and although this is uh, less well understood, the endothelium uh, it likely also can communicate with cardiomyocytes uh, and through transfer of the contents of extracellular vesicles can change the function of, uh, of cells. So uh, these vesicles include um, contents such as microRNAs and protein. And so there's been a lot of interest in uh, isolating these vesicles from the blood and measuring these contents um, to identify novel biomarkers. So we wanted to understand in our patients whether there were changes in extracellular vesicles. We used a size exclusion chromatography to isolate these uh, vesicles from the blood. Uh, and you can see here from transmission electron um, microscopy uh, that we're able to isolate vesicles. Uh, and when we look at the, the vesicles in, in, during tre treatment, we find in patients that develop CTRCD that there's elevated concentrations of these vesicles. Uh, across uh, treatment times. Now, these vesicles can come from a variety of sources, including the endothelium. And so we're, we're now interested in identifying the cellular source of these vesicles uh, that we see in, in circulation. We also wanted to see if the contents of microRNAs might be useful, um, useful as biomarkers. And so we sequenced uh, about 2,000 microRNAs using HTG EdgeSeq uh, on 20 samples per time point, and 50% of these had a CTRCD across the, the first three time points. This is a, a quantitative nuclease protection assay, and this is just diagrammed here. We found, interestingly, if we took the, the top 20 differentially expressed microRNAs, that again, even before treatment begins, if we sequence microRNAs from extracellular vesicles, you can see that they really separate out nicely between those patients that will develop CTRCD versus those that will not. And if we look at the differentially expressed microRNAs between these groups, you can see large changes between, um, between these groups at each uh, time point. Uh, but very little changes across time within the groups. And so this really uh, illustrates to us that microRNAs are nicely distinguishing those patients that will go on to develop CTRCD. And again, this is present even before treatment begins. If we look at the targets of these microRNAs, we find interesting targets that, that could be relevant to CTRCD, including uh, apoptosis, uh, senescence, uh, and response to cell stress. We wanted to, to further understand how uh, anthracyclines might affect the production of extracellular vesicles. And so we used, again, primary endothelial cells, exposed them to chemotherapeutic drugs, and used ultracentrifugation to isolate these vesicles. Uh, again, we can isolate uh, uh, vesicles from the media uh, of these cells. And if we measure a particle um, diameter, um, by nanoparticle tracking analysis, we find that chemotherapeutics increase the diameter of vesicles, which suggests they may be more uh, like microparticles uh, and, and dramatically increases the concentration. We're, we're now um, trying to understand how the contents change in response to these drugs, uh, and we're looking at microRNAs and proteins. One of the, the areas that we're very interested in is trying to understand how these vesicles uh, change in, in function. And to, to get at this, we're looking at how those endothelial cell derived vesicles can alter the function of cardiomyocytes. And we're using exceligence, which measures uh, viability, contraction rate, relaxation rate, and beat rate. Uh, and this is in collaboration with Seema Mattel at, at SickKids. And we want to understand how these vesicles alter uh, cardiomyocyte function and then to determine the mechanisms. So just to, to conclude, uh, what, what have we learned about early detection and mechanisms of CTRCD? Uh, we found that repeated cardiac imaging can detect uh, quite early stages of cardiac dysfunction, uh, 
uh, but it really isn't practical to, to do this in, in every single cancer patient. Um, looking at, at circulating cardiac biomarkers, we in our hands, we find that they're, they're not informative for detecting CTRCD. However, inflammatory and endothelial markers are elevated in patients that will go on to develop CTRCD. And importantly, that's present even before treatment is initiated. We also find that extracellular vesicle production is increased during chemotherapy, in, specifically in those patients that develop CTRCD. And if we look at microRNA contents of those vesicles, they're quite informative in identifying patients uh, even before treatment that will go on to develop uh, this, this disorder. And so because the, the endothelium seems to be quite important in cardiotoxicity, uh, it will be of interest to determine whether endothelial protective therapies might prevent the development of this disease. Uh, and interestingly, there's been a number of studies, including one uh, by Dinesh's group here in Toronto, uh, that have shown that statins, which are known to be vascular protective, uh, decrease the um, uh, or impair uh, or sorry, improve the, the left ventricular ejection fraction decrease in response to uh, chemotherapy uh, and decrease the incidence of CTRCD. So this is really quite exciting uh, in terms of trying to develop new therapies. So with that, I'll, I'll thank um, my lab and, and especially Dakota Gustafson uh, and Chris Ching, who have been uh, the main drivers of this work. This has been done in partnership with, with Dinesh, as well as the Peter Monk Cardiac Center, um, also collaborative help from Paul Yip and Sima Mattel, uh, and of course, thanks to the, the funding that has supported this work. Thank you.